Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be looking at how to compare two columns using VLOOKUP. So you have one column with one set of values and another column with another set of values. And you're trying to figure out which values are repeated in both columns, which values show up in both columns. So uh, using VLOOKUP, you can actually get this to work automatically in Excel. All right. I've seen a ton of cases of people who actually do this exact kind of job by hand and it's tedious. All right. I mean, tedious doesn't even begin to describe it. Uh, they usually do like one or two hours doing this. So make sure that you're not that kind of person. Watch the video. Now, just be warned, we're going to be looking at VLOOKUP, conditional formatting, and uh, a couple of other formulas. And I'm going to try to cram them into your brain in like 14 minutes. So be prepared. You can actually watch this video without any formal VLOOKUP training, but it's going to be a lot to take in. So make sure that you strap yourself in and uh, pay attention because this is going to be interesting. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, guys, let's get started. As I explained in the intro, we're going to need a little bit of VLOOKUP, but don't worry, uh, I'm going to walk you through it every step of the way. Again, remember, you're not going to learn VLOOKUP fully just from a 10 minute video. All right, you have to practice, practice, practice. Practice is king. All right, let's talk about uh, the situation here. We have a list here, a mailing list with potential clients, and it's about a thousand, a thousand uh, records long. We have here a list of purchases made by some of those clients, all right? Not all of them. As you'll notice, the purchasing list is much smaller, all right? It's about 200, 200 clients now. So we want to figure out which one of these clients over here, of the potential clients, actually went ahead and made a purchase, all right? This is uh, an email list. We've been sending them, spamming them with emails and uh, begging them to actually take our business. Some of them actually complied and bought some of our products. All right, guys. So what it is that you that you have to do? Well, first, let's do it by hand, all right? Because a lot of my students end up doing this by hand uh, throughout their jobs. And uh, like, it's, it's really time consuming and tedious and sad when you have to do this by hand. So I'm going to set up a new column here that's called uh, purchase, all right? Interrogation mark. So I'm going to be asking whether, say, for example, this guy over here or one, I have no idea what that is, um, actually made a purchase, all right? And the way we'd go about it, if we did it by hand, would be, well, I'd open up a find and replace uh, dialog box. I'd copy this person's name over here and click find next furiously. All right. Notice that no matter how hard I press find next, it's not going to find anything else. That means that this person is not going to show up in my purchases made column. All right. In my purchases made table. And that means that he or she is not a customer. All right, it's not a customer at all. However, so I'm going to type here, in here, no. If I were to repeat the same process here for Jay Harden, which again, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, and click find next, notice how this person shows up in the second table right here. So that means that they actually bought something from us. Uh, they bought uh, manual binding apple confine I don't know what that is but the point is that they actually bought something from us so that's cool so yeah this is a client I'm gonna type in yes all right and then have to repeat that over and over again the process for the next 1,000 people now once you understand how it is made by hand we can go ahead and do it with Excel all right now Excel is going to do it very simply for us but as I mentioned in the intro we're going to we're going to have to learn to do VLOOKUP at least that's for the bare bones version of this uh, exercise and if we want to do a complete version, we have to learn conditional formatting and the if function as well. All right. So VLOOKUP, really simple. Let's get started with F13. Make sure that you're in F13 and press equals VLOOKUP, open parentheses. Now, the lookup value that we're going for right here is going to be, well, this is going to be a little bit hard. Let's get up here to FX. Notice how it says insert function where my mouse cursor is and click on it. All right. The function arguments here are, here we go. We have the lookup value, and uh, it's when we get asked for the lookup value, it's what are we starting with, all right? We're starting with the name of someone in the potential clients list, so that's the thing I select. Next, I'm getting asked for the table array. Now, this is the part where I lose most of my classroom students, and I have to explain this over and over and over again. The lookup, for some horrible reason, will not be able to find the email unless it's looking for the email in a table and get this, unless it's looking for the email in a table whose first column is the email column, all right? So if I were to get asked for a table array and I were to select this entire table right here, I would be wrong, all right? It wouldn't find anything because the first column is not the email column, 
all right so it's not going to work so how do i get this to work well it's really really simple just head over to k12 and this is where the email column starts and that's where we start selecting our table you can select everything from k to m and uh, then make sure that you do an absolute reference by pressing F4 on your keyboard, all right? You press F4 and notice how these dollar signs prop up. Some of my more sharper students will usually ask, what happens if I only select K? You'd be right, okay? Selecting only K for this exercise in particular is all right for our purposes. You don't need uh, L and N, but let's leave it at that. All right, guys? Now, next thing that I'm being asked for is a call index number that's asking me in which column number do we have the email that we're going to be comparing, all right? Now, uh, you'd be tempted to go ahead and say K, all right? But it's not asking us for this identifiers. It's actually ask asking us to count in the table that we selected where email is, one, two, three. That's also wrong. Remember that we started with mail as the first column. So it's in column number one that we select mail, all right? Uh, make sure that this doesn't confuse you guys because I know it can get a little bit confusing. It's just the column number in the table that we selected that has uh, the data that we want to bring back, all right? Finally, range lookup. Range lookup can either be an exact lookup or an approximate lookup, all right? And that's an entire topic on its own. However, since we're looking for stuff, um, since, since we're looking for, how do I call it? Um, text, since we're looking for text, then it's always going to be an exact lookup. And we write exact lookup using a zero, all right? So I just type in a zero and that's it, all right, guys? So we have our entire formula here for the VLOOKUP. I'm going to press OK, and there we go. I know it's working so far, at least it's halfway working, because it's telling me an A, not available. That means that it went ahead, looked for HM Brand's name right here in Purchases Made, didn't find him or her, and it's returning an A, not available, this person didn't make any purchases at all with us. All right, now let's get here and double click and drag our formula down. Notice how for some of the names, we actually get an email, all right? We get the exact same email we had right here. That means that Jay Hardin was actually found in this column, all right? And technically, that's it, all right, guys? Technically, that's it. We already have, um, we already have our data, we know who purchased and who purchased and who didn't. And if you and if you're just looking for the bare bones bare version of this exercise, we're done. All right. You can just add a filter. Let's go over here to data and add a filter and ask it to select everyone that's not an NA. So check boxes for everyone except the NAs. And this is a list of people who actually bought. All right. This is a list of people who actually bought. Notice how the count right here is letting us know it's 222 people that actually went ahead and bought thanks to our email campaign. All right, guys. However, this probably isn't going to be enough for your boss because you give him this or you give her this and um, she's going to say, well, yeah, but how do I know who actually purchased? I don't want to be, I mean, it gives me a headache to read NA or email, all right? So let's do something that's really simple and straightforward and understandable. Purchase, true or false. All right, this is really straightforward. It's either true or false. It's either a yes or a no. All right, guys? So I'm going to introduce a formula to you that's probably not familiar to you, even if you're already sort of advanced, and it's called is error. All right? So I'm going to start typing is error, and notice how I get two formulas here. Both are correct, all right? I can use the first one, I can use the second one. Notice, um, well, I'm not going to use is error because it's excluding NA and that's the type of error that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to use just is error. All right, let's avoid any mistakes. So just going to ask me for a value. I'm going to select this value right here, close parenthesis, and it's going to return true and false for the guys that, that actually purchased. That's going to be a problem. All right, that's going to be a problem for us because this is the opposite of what we were looking for. We're looking for the people who didn't purchase to be false and the people who actually purchased from us to be true. All right, so I need to find a way to get this is error to flip. All right, so here's a second formula. <coughs> here's a second formula I'm going to present to you. It's going to be called not, all right? Like the not joke from Borat. It's pretty much the same thing, all right? So everything from... I'm going to select my mouse cursor and make sure that it falls between the equals and the i, right? Between the equals and the i. And I'm going to type in not, 
All right, notice how I'm being presented with not formula as is. So I open my parentheses here and I close my parentheses at the very end. And I'm pretty much telling uh, Excel not what it's going to do is if it reserves a true, then it's going to turn into a false. And if it receives and if it receives a false, it's going to turn it into a true. All right, so it pretty much just flips around whatever it received. So I press enter and notice how now I flipped everything around, all right? I have false and true and false, and the trues are applicable to the purchases. All right, guys, so we are good to go on that front, all right? We're good to go on that front. Now, uh, this is much easier to read. Either they purchased or they didn't. It's either true that they purchased or it's false. Now, uh, last thing, and this is really so that you can show off at the office, is let's paint everyone that purchased with a certain color, say green, all right, guys? So this is going to be really simple. I'm going to go over here to that person's email in A13, and I'm going to go over to data, I'm going to go over to home, and then select conditional formatting, all right? And the rule that we're looking for is all the way down here in new rules, click on it, and you'll get this dialog box. Once you get the dialog box, scroll all the way down here to use a formula to determine which cells to format, all right? So I'm going to, to tell it to format values where this formula is true which is going to be pretty much, I need to return, I need to write in something here that's going to return either false or true. Luckily for us, this cells over here, they're already false or true, all right? So the only thing that I'm going to type in is equals this right here, okay? Make sure that it's not an absolute reference. So you can go ahead and delete the, the dollar signs. And then if whatever it says here is true, then it's going to get painted a certain color. And if it says it's false, it's not going to do anything at all. So let's go over here to format, click format, go over here to the fill tab and select, say for example, this little green hue. All right, I'm going to press okay and we should get nothing. Why? This person is not a customer, all right? This says false, it's not going to do anything. All right, now that we did that, let's, let's extend our formatting all the way down. So let's click for the conditional formatting, let's click manage rules and Right here, it says it, it only applies to A13, this one right here. So I'm going to delete this and select all of my column from A13 all the way to A1012. I'm going to press apply. Now, guys, notice how as soon as I press apply, I get my data, all right? I get my colors for pretty much every single person that actually bought. If they're in green, they are a customer. That makes it, makes it easy to tell. Now, guys, one thing that I want you to note, uh, let me go back here to manage rules, is sometimes, and I don't know why this happens when you press apply, this actually moves from A13 all the way back to A1, and everything is sort of out of, out of sync. So make sure that when you press apply A13 to A1012, it actually stayed in A13 to A1012, all right? I don't know why conditional formatting does that, but it does, all right? So let's press OK. And there we go. Now, one last thing that we might want to do is figure out how many clients actually made purchases. All right. So I'm going to type in here how many purchases. All right. And in this empty cell over here, I'm going to start typing in equals. And I'm going to use a formula called COUNTIF. Now, this is sort of complicated if you're a newbie, but I'm going to try to make it as simple as I can. COUNTIF open parenthesis, all right? And it's asking me for two things, the range and the criteria. Range is where is it going to count? It's going to count in column G, all right? The criteria that it's going to be looking for, it's going to be looking for a true, all right? I'm going to close parenthesis and press enter. And notice that it's going to tell me that there were 222 purchases, uh, at least 222 clients in my potential clients list that actually went ahead and made a purchase, all right, guys? So. That's pretty much it. That's how you compare to columns in, in Visual, uh, I mean, with VLOOKUP in Excel. And um, how you can do the whole exercise, all right? You can change it to true false, you can paint it a certain color, you can count how many F values actually were in one column or the other. And as an exercise to you guys, you could actually try and do it in the inverse, all right? Check out how many of this clients over here are actually in the potential clients list. All right, I know the outcome of that exercise. Um, everybody in this list is here, so you should get 
a match for every single one of these emails that you look here for here in the potential client list. All right, guys, that's it. We're done for the day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you next week for the next video. Do you want to be an Excel god? Our online course will turn you into an Excel master in only 90 days. Excel is the most important tool in the office, but almost nobody knows how to use it. Most people dive right into Excel with no formal training and never use the right tools. And thus, they end up delivering mess reports that are full of mistakes and they end up hating their jobs. In reality, Excel is really simple to use and can do your job for you, if you know how to use it. But you have to pick the right place to learn from or you'll only end up more confused with all of the different tools and functions that Excel has to offer you. So, what can you do? Our Excel course is tailor-made for you. We're going to teach you Excel, all of Excel, using real-life examples. From simple exercises to full-fledged business case studies. Take the online course and you'll be an Excel god in only 90 days. The course consists in more than 45 lessons and 15 case studies, all with their detailed solutions completely recorded in video and you're going to be able to access them whenever you want, whatever you want. Best of all, you're going to have lifetime access to the course and you're going to get any of the updates that we're constantly putting out for free. Even better, when you get our course, you'll have free access to our full Visual Basic and Macros course and also to our Power BI course, all with just one single purchase. More than 3,000 students have passed through our classrooms. We've attended companies like Kodak, IBM, Samex, HP, Continental, DB Schenker, and more. So, if you want to absolutely master Excel, make sure that you sign up now. You will become an Excel guy. A2 Excel.